어, 여러분도 이제 발표를 통해서 들으셨겠지만 굉장히 한국은 수소 관련된 정책을 비교적 빨리 어, 로드맵을 만들고 아울러서 적극적인 정책을 추진하고 있습니다. 특히 수소의 생산에서 유통 활용까지 전 주기에 걸쳐서 균형 있게 성장한다는 목표를 가지고 먼저 생산에서는 국내에서 생산되는 그린 블루 그리고 원자력 수소를 어, 생산해 나갈 계획입니다. 어, 아울러서 국내 재생에너지 여건이 제한, 제한이기 때문에 해외에서 수소를 생산해서 국내로 수입하는 계획을 아울러 가지고 있습니다. 이 과정에서 청정수소에 대한 인증이 중요한 이슈고 또, 또 최근에 한국은 수소법을 개정하여서 수소 활용 부분에 있어서 수요를 창출하는 계획을 수립을 했습니다. 청정수소가 생산이 되면 이를 인증을 하고 발전 부분, 산업 부분, 수송 부분에 활용될 수 있는 시장을 만들려고 합니다. 먼저 발전 부분은 수소 발전량에 대한 입찰 시장을 개설할 계획입니다. 이 입찰 시장을 통해서 수소 발전이 기존 발전, 화석연료 발전보다는 비쌀 수밖에 없기 때문에 그 가격 차에 대한 보전을 하는 인센티브를 지원할 계획입니다. 아울러 산업과 수송 부분에 있어서는 일정 양을 청정수소로 활용하도록 의무화를 할 계획입니다. 먼저 청정수소 인증제에 대해서는 청정수소에 대한 정의가 국가별로 지금 조금씩 다릅니다. 그런데 국방 교육에 있어서는 이 정의가 통일이 돼야 될 것이고 특히 인증을 상호 어, 수출국과 수입국과가 상호 인증하는 어, 메커니즘이 필요하다고 생각합니다. 아울러 수출하는 국가에서는 수소를 어, 대에 선적하기 위한 수출 항만과 수출 인프라가 필요하고요. 또 활용하는 국가에 있어서는 마찬가지로 수술을 인수하기 위한 인프라 그리고 활용처가 필요합니다. 화석연료에 비해서 장기적으로는 청정수소가 경제성을 갖게 될 것이라고 기대를 하고 있습니다만 화석연료에 비해서 값비싼 수소에 대한 수요를 창출하기 위해서는 정부 차, 정부에서 인센티브 지원이 절실하다고 생각합니다. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Han Ho Song from San Jose Chinese University, and hope you had a good lunch today. This is to establish a legal basis kind of for the clean hydrogen legislation. Until last year, we've been analyzed the hydrogen certification system in major foreign countries, and at the same time, we've been developed an LCA methodology for major hydrogen production pathways, and based on that, we've drafted a clean hydrogen certification system. And then this year, actually, we are quite busy because we are to determine the certification threshold this year. And at the same time, we are talking with our kind of Korean and also foreign company partners and evaluating the life cycle greenhouse gas emissions of their kind of own hydrogen project. From next year, we need to finalize the regulation, codes, and standards, and at the same time, we need to design the incentive program for the clean hydrogen. So these are five major principles we stick to when we are considering or when we are designing the certification scheme. The first and the foremost is the GHG reduction effectiveness, because all the motivation you are doing this clean hydrogen is to reduce the GHG emissions. And then when we are setting the threshold and for the clean hydrogen certification, and then we are reflecting the Korean specific situations we need to consider. 
And then because we are dealing with the life cycle emissions associated with the hydrogen, hydrogen production, and we need to focus on the materiality in accounting of greenhouse gas emissions, meaning that we are going to focusing on the significant and sensitive emission numbers more. From technology point of view, we are allowing technology diversity in producing hydrogen, but still we are considering the advancement or we are maximizing the advantages of each technology, meaning that we are setting the very high goal as our threshold and to reduce the GHG reduction, uh, to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions associated with the hydrogen production. But we know that all these technologies are not cheap or are not easy to be achieved. So we are trying to be flexible enough. So during the transition period, you know, we are taking step-by-step -step approach and then considering you know, those kind of difficulties. Here I'm just listing up some hot issues, hot discussion topic we've done. So first of all, for the GHG reduction effectiveness, actually there are kind of two hot topics we've been discussed. And then this is the case that there's a byproduct hydrogen, you know, which is produced from the petrochemical process. And then the byproduct hydrogen was being used, has been used in the feed and in the fuel in the same plant. Externally, then that means to run the same the plant operation, it may need, it may require additional hydrogen production, and at the same time, it may need additional natural gas uses to compensate for the heating values missing from the hydrogen sales. That means if we just kind of run the same exact plant, but just kind of using the hydrogen kind of being sold outside, then that may include that may increase the overall GHG emission of the plant. So in such case, you know, that we propose of uses of hydrogen may not be considered under certification. And for the second one, technology diversity and advancement consideration with the 90% or more CO2 capture as our threshold value for the clean hydrogen certification, which is a very challenging target. We are setting it very high. And the third one, the flexibility, and that's more tied to the green hydrogen case. So, you know, in the meantime, during the transition period, we are accepting the grid connection to run that electrolyzer more stably, and also PPA or contract equivalent for the proof of the green electricity uses in the green uh, hydrogen production. And then number four point is kind of more obvious, as I mentioned earlier, so we are focusing on the materiality or big number in the greenhouse gas emissions in the life cycles, and then we are trying to be more accurate in the big numbers. And then number five is the threshold setting. This is the kind of life cycle boundary we are considering. So firstly, the well-to-gate boundary for the domestically produced hydrogen case. And then this is probably the kind of highlight of the today's presentation, which is talking about the threshold value, tentative threshold value, I should say, and for the clean hydrogen certification in Korea. So threshold, we are tentatively, that's around you know, five kilograms CO2 per you know, kilogram of hydrogen. And if you see the chart, and it's showing you the, the, in the middle, that's the domestic blue hydrogen. And in the bottom, that's imported blue hydrogen. And as compared to the top part, which is the SMR or gray hydrogen, as you can see, the both blue can have the, can read the CO2, uh, the GHG reduction, the potential more than 60%. But just see that number. That's a, with the 95% capture of CO2. That's a very challenging number. And you may say that the five kilograms of CO2 is quite big uh, rather than, I mean, as compared to the, what we were discussing internationally. But just thinking, I'm just remind you that additional burden we have, LNG import and CO2 shipping, that's just 1.5 kilo itself, by itself. So you just deduct that, that's being kind of three kilograms per kilogram of hydrogen, which is actually compatible as what's been discussed outside internationally. And for the CCS mechanism, we are crediting, we are allowing overseas CCS when you do the blue hydrogen calculation. But that kind of it should be verifiable that the credit, the carbon capture credit, is not used elsewhere. And then enhanced oil recovery can be eligible, but the incentive could be somewhat adjusted because that EOR can lead to additional revenue for the company who are producing it. And a CCU is not currently under consideration, but we are open to discussion for inclusion and following international guidelines. 
this is an incentive, just some preliminary layout for the incentive kind of program. And then so there are two parts. The firstly, when you do the clean hydrogen certification, and then there is incentive going on to compensate for the kind of cost difference of hydrogen production depending on the hydrogen production pathways. And then if you use a clean hydrogen into the power generation under CHPS, there is additional incentive which now is to compensate for the cost difference in electricity generation as compared to the conventional power generation technology. And for the industry and then the transportation sector, more or less, we're going to use the mandatory ratio of using the clean hydrogen rather than incentives. So actually, that's all I have today. And then thank you very much for the listening. Thank you.